The global markets are all in freefall this Friday. $5 trillion wiped out from world stocks amid fastest collapse in history. Investors are on the retreat worldwide as fears of the coronavirus deepen. The plunge in global equities has wiped out more than $5 trillion in value, or equivalent to nearly Japan's annual GDP. And this is only the beginning. 1929 will be considered child's play compared to what's coming. Supply chains are starting to falter, and tourists are staying home. The virus is also sparking the sell-off of pandemic bonds. As the business community struggles to predict the coronavirus economic fallout, observers warn the virus could be the final blow that throws the world economy into recession. Global investors aren't waiting for economic data to hit to see how bad things have gotten since the virus has sent China into economic paralysis. They are selling first and asking questions later. The Dow Jones had its worst one-day point drop in history, tumbling almost 4.5%. That sentiment spilled over to Asia with Tokyo's Nikkei shedding 3.6% today. And Hong Kong's Hang Seng also closed down 2.4%. It takes a long time and much effort to roll a snowball to the top of a hill, but when you finally get it rolling down the other side, it can only get bigger, and there is no stopping it. Welcome to the stock market snowball from hell. Coronavirus halts China's mega-industrial complex for almost a week now, and there is no real end in sight for the disruptions. Markets drastically affected by lopsided reliance on China, there you go. The fear comes to the media and our own president telling us borderline nothing important. Clearly, printing and jawboning are ineffective in the face of reality. The markets, like the virus, are uncontrollable and will do as they please. The market was living paycheck to paycheck, and the hot water heater went out. The corporations must be reducing stock buybacks since they will need the money with lower revenues and less risk tolerance for corporate debt. The virus did indeed help Ion the coming collapse could also be a war or simply a bad timing on colossal defaults in China, in either case, this was bound to happen. And these Wall Street traders have seen nothing yet. Most of this stock market is monopoly paper money overpriced hype, hedge fund many hanky panky nothing is true everything is lie, bad karma. Their Ponzi scheme is collapsing, just close the market and have King Trump declare everyone is rich, what a joke. The whole market is and has been a manipulated AI scam backed by the Fed and Wall Street for decades. Do you think a few hundred thousand day traders, i.e., clowns, are going to make minutia of difference in an American regime-sponsored Ponzi scheme? The whole show is imploding. These valuations were all fake and propped with fake money anyway. It's ridiculous how you have the bankers furiously shoveling money into the furnace to keep all the bubbles inflated, while their cousins in the media are rubbing their hands together anticipating the collapse. When the dust clears, the bankers will simply have consolidated more assets, and we will be left that much poorer and unstable due to the bankers controlling both our money supply and means of production. The fundamentals were long gone, so it was a matter of time what would trigger to pop this asset bubbles. The manufacturer index, the freight industry, and unicorn ventures had been down several months before this event. The coronavirus is not the cause of the drop. It is just the pin that popped the overvalued stock market bubble that was created by the central banks and subsequent low interest loans and buybacks that flowed into the stock market. There is no economy in our economy. This is a pandemic. It has not been seen in living memory use any chance next week to just get out and just remember it is only money. Your health is more important. It should be an interesting close. Who wants to hold stocks over a weekend likely to spew bad news? Why hold risk over the weekend? News will only get worse. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. Please take some time to subscribe to my two backup channels. I do upload videos there, too, on a daily basis. You'll find the links in the description box. Thank you. The major averages were under pressure on Friday, in part because investors kept adding to their bond market exposure and fleeing equities. The benchmark U.S. 10-year Treasury yield touched a fresh record low. It was last at 1.16%. Yields move inversely to prices. The Dow had closed at a record high on February 12. It only took the S&P 500 six days to fall from an all-time high into correction levels, marking the broad index's fastest drop of that magnitude outside of a one-day crash. German growth will almost certainly be weighed down by the coronavirus, even if it's still unclear how much, said Bundesbank President Jens Weidmann. 
Numerous trade-related uncertainties continue to threaten the nation's export-oriented companies, and the virus outbreak presents an additional economic risk, he said at a press conference Friday. South Korea reported 571 more cases on Friday, taking its tally past 2,300, and Japan's Hokkaido declared a state of emergency. Switzerland banned events with more than 1,000 people. Geneva Auto Show cancelled amid virus fears. The global events industry is a $1.1 trillion market consisting of trade shows, conferences, festivals, concerts, and sporting events. This industry will be severely impacted by the limiting of travel and avoidance of mass assemblies of people. Since the exhibitor booths were already set up and the exhibitors were ready to display their products, I believe the auto show was cancelled because the attendees did not want to risk traveling to the show. Two Swiss watch trade shows have been cancelled, too. Good idea. All countries should be banning these huge crowded events of any type. Also, increase border controls since Chinese are still flying around the world, UPS and FedEx are still flying back and forth to China, etc. I hope this whole thing lasts long enough for them to cancel next year's Davos. The Swedish economy loses steam as focus shifts to virus fallout. Commerce Bank urged to step up cuts, overhaul model in review. Hyundai halts production at major South Korean plant after worker tests positive for coronavirus. 1,000 cars a day, repeat a million times. Markets crash in worst week since Lehman. Stocks tumbled once again on Friday, adding losses to the market's worst week since the financial crisis, as worries over the coronavirus and its impact on the economy continue to rattle investor sentiment. The Dow Jones Industrial Average dropped 710 points, or more than 2.5 percent, and briefly traded below 25,000. The 30-stock Dow was down more than 1,000 points earlier in the day. The S&P 500 slid 2.1 percent while the Nasdaq Composite briefly turned positive before trading back down by 1.2 percent. This ain't rotation. It's a liquidation. This is going to leave a mark. Any rally and a top at lunch mean 2 o'clock liquidations. 2008 taught us how this works. The Fed could step out and ASS blast a monthly close, so today is a wild one. This not panic selling. It has been very orderly and mechanical. Maybe Monday, we can get a 5-7% gap down and a halt. This was destined to happen anyway, cyclic massive wealth transfer from the masses interspersed with long periods of milder wealth transfer is the nature of our financial system and it is getting about time for the big one again, the virus is the suspiciously convenient excuse, not the cause. If we were not so chemically dumbed down and placated, we would just string up all the bankers. Trump should have demanded Fed hikes when he came into office. This would have crashed the economy, but that is what's needed, but who votes for crashing the economy? We like to blame politicians, the Fed, banks, etc., but really, it's the ignorant American electorate that is responsible. There should have been riots on the streets years ago when the Fed kept rates at zero for over a decade. Five trillion dollars wiped out from world stocks. That five trillion dollars never existed in the real world. Wealth on paper is not worth what you think it's worth. Having $5 trillion evaporate is actually good because it didn't exist in the first place. I've never understood how gleeful people get when the value of their assets rise as measured using fiat currency, which is itself a depreciating asset. More seriously, we have generations of financiers who think prosperity is a number developed by a council of technocrats and who consequently believe markets only go up. Or said another way, they believe real business misjudgment is impossible, merely shades of good judgment. That worldview was always a bug in search of a windshield. To the extent, reality will be a shock to their worldview, even a historically minor 2% correction is potentially catastrophic. These are adult children in the business of risk management, who never understood that risks were real. Add to that the central banks of the world who have fractional reserved securities to secure monetary creation, a creation that can simply go poof on a fractionally reserved leverage basis with a price decline, and this could get interesting in the biblical sense. In the end, they will run the printing press until it burns a hole through the planet. It is the only thing they know how to do. All the stock markets are pre-programmed algorithms designed to transfer money from the fish to the sharks, you might be able to squeeze out a few percents every now and then, but most investments lose, especially in options. 98% of all options expire out of the money. 
the VIX ensures it is difficult to win unless you get in early and know and guess which way the markets will turn. Likewise, trading fees are indicative of a hole in a bathtub, the same as all transaction fees and taxes. Obviously, the creators of this casino were well versed at stealing a lot of money with percentages and attrition, because even 1% can break even a wealthy person if they keep playing and losing long enough. The dumbest thing about the serfs is their inability to see the fake money and markets were created by the infinite money printers et al. to ensure all wealth is transferred to them one way or another. And so it's thanks for playing Monopoly economics, suckers. That's how the bankers end up with all the cash, property, and assets. Pouring into a tub with holes in it and when they go to retire, their money won't even be worth one quarter of what it used to be worth before taxes. Financial idiots everywhere. And if the derivatives bubble breaks, they will confiscate the bank deposits. You have been warned. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like. Share. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my two backup channels, I do upload videos there too on a daily basis. You'll find the links in the description box. Thank you.